Hello, everyone. Ready for the next session? Is everyone a little bit energetic? See a lot of people like sitting down like this. Just like give me a little bit of your energy because our next speaker is on stage for the first time. So please make sure to be kind to her. She has a long standing career in web design and she's going to be telling you all about white space or at least all that she can do in the next 10 minutes, which I think is a lot. So please give it up for Giovanna Arani. So, hello everyone. I'm really excited for being here and I hope you're excited too and you had a good time at WordCamp. Uh, just like Flori said, I'm Joanna Aravani. I'm a designer for over a decade now. Well, this is a very old photo, but I swear that's me. And for the past six years, I'm part of the Presidium team, trying to evolve their uh, brand and web presence. And today, I'm here to talk to you about white space and its importance on web design. But before we dive into the benefits of white space in design specifically, let's take just a moment to think and observe how white space is everywhere around us, just like the air we're breathing, affecting and improving our lives. You can see that in architecture, making our cities breathe and providing a better living, in book design, where large margins and line breaks work together to enhance the content. You can see that especially on poetry books. Uh, in art museums, where generous empty walls uh, work as a frame surrounding its important artifact. Well, up to this very moment, where I'm standing up here all alone, so you can focus on what I'm saying. So, let's see what white space means in web design. In design, white, white space is a term that refers to the negative space, the empty space surrounding all your design elements. And even though it's called white, it can really take any color, texture, pattern, photo, whatever, as long as it's devoid of any other important elements. And unlike other visual components, white space is kind of invisible. Most of the times we don't even see it, but in a way that's the point. Its main purpose is to separate visual elements and emphasize what's important. And if used correctly, it can really work as the invisible glue holding all your design together. So let's see what are the types of white space. White space can be classified in two ways. The first one is based on its usefulness, its purpose on a layout. And based on this, we have active white space and passive white space. Active white space is the kind of space that adds emphasis and structure to your design. It's left out or added in, depends on how you see it, intentionally to delimit one element from another, give focus and emphasize what's important. Passive white space, on the other hand, is the kind of space that occurs somehow naturally, such as the one between the lines of a text, also known as line height, or the safe area surrounding your logo. And although it goes unnoticed, this kind of space ensures that the content uh, of your web on your website will be easy to read. And both types of white spaces are equally important in order to achieve a balanced final design. So the alternative way to differentiate between white spaces is based uh, on their size and density relative to the content. And based on this, we have macro white space and micro white space. Macro white space refers to larger areas of space in a composition. It's used strategically, again, to separate the visual elements and guide the user's attention. While micro white space, as the name suggests, refers to smaller instances of space, like the one between the letters or the line of a text, or the one between grid images. Again, it works in a discrete way to make sure the text elements on your website will be legible and the images on a grid or a pattern uh, will not look cluttered. And as you will notice, there's a strong correlation between active and macro white space, passive and a uh, micro white space. So now that we have discussed what white space is and how it's classified, let's break down its benefits in web design. 
First, we have legibility. A text that's too tightly crammed together or too widely spaced apart can be really hard to, to read. And this is where microspace comes in. And even though there are no hard rules when it comes to letter spacing and line height, if you your text looks uh, hard to read, it probably means uh, your spacing needs adjustments. Improved readability. By adding white space between your text and other visual elements, you allow your content to breathe and reduce visual clutter. And this makes it much more easier for users to scan your web page, stay focused, absorb the information, and ultimately keep reading. Okay, so according to Google, it takes visitors only 50 milliseconds to form an opinion about a website. And white space is the best way to make a first good impression since it contributes to a much more pleasant and comfortable experience. Also, white space can help you clearly communicate your core messaging since it draws attention to important elements like uh, headlines, CTAs or key images. And by surrounding these elements with white space, they stand out more prominently while possible confusion is uh, eliminated. Visual clarity and logical grouping. Well, in this world of visual chaos, our minds struggle to process all the information they come across daily. And in order to do that, they use the law of proximity established by the Gestalt psychologists. It states that our brains are built to see patterns and groups everywhere, and so they tend to group uh, objects that are uh, near, its, near each other. And white space creates a sense of visual order, organization, and grouping in your layout. It, it adds structure and helps establish a hierarchy of importance. Well, all of the above, uh, can make a visitor on your website either have a short, confusing stay or a more pleasant experience which will keep him engaged. And white space plays a vital role in removing distraction, emphasizing what's important, and providing a clear user journey so your visitors achieve the goal that brought them to your website at the first place. And finally, higher conversion rate. All of the benefits we discussed, emphasizing what's important, uh, remo removing visual clutter, uh, improving the overall user experience, can highly increase your conversion rates, which, let's face it, is almost always the main goal. So, we have established what white space is, what are the different types of, of white space, and why it's really important, well, everywhere, but uh, in design as well. So, what should we do now? Should we just start doubling the space between our elements and blindly adding white space to our designs? Of course not. Uh, white space should be used uh, properly in order to be effective. This is a 10 minutes talk, so I'm gonna very quickly go through some tips, some really basic tips on how to use white space and what to keep in mind. Proper text formatting. We already saw how a uh, micro white space uh, is crucial to make your uh, text legible on your website. So start by choosing a legible font, obviously, uh, especially for body text. If you're not sure, you better opt for one of the classic well-designed fonts. And even, even though most fonts are by default well calibrated, minor adjustments to your letter spacing can improve legibility even more. So try experiment uh, with adding up to 1.5% of spacing to your layout and check whether it makes it easier to read. And line height, of course. Line height is what we perceive as the spacing between the lines of a text. And once again, the exact value we should use depends on many factors, uh, such as the font you're using, but somewhere between 1.1 to 1.4 for headings, 1.4 to 1.7 for uh, paragraphs is a good starting point. Paddings and margins. White space can be effectively created through paddings and margins. And padding is the space between an element and its border. Proper padding 
prevents those elements from looking uh, crowded what, while it enhances their visual appeal. Margin is the space between that border and other elements. So add margins at the edge of your layout to create a sense of uh, spaciousness and frame your content. And finally, try to maintain consistency on your paddings and margin th uh, throughout your website to create a sense of, of a unity and a visual order. Balance and clarity. Achieving balance uh, in a web page and a design in general involves careful consideration of all your visual elements and their rela relationship. So, uh, understand the purpose of white space in your design. White space should not be treated as merely empty space, but as a deliberate design tool that's used to uh, increase readability, add organization, and establish visual hierarchy. And also, try to uh, distribute your elements evenly across your layout and consider the proportion of the white space relative to your content. Uh, try to make sure that neither element uh, dominates excessively while the overall de uh, design uh, looks balanced. Okay, remember the basics. When using white space, try to remember fundamental design principles that can be related to its use. We already saw how the Gestalt theory aligns perfectly with white space. The law of proximity states that objects that are uh, near each other are visually perceived as grouped compared to objects that are further apart. Practically, this means that by adding white space between elements, we signal to the user that these elements are less related compared to elements that are closer together, which are uh, perceived as grouped. And keep in mind the reading patterns. Uh, there are two primary reading layouts, the F pattern and the Z pattern, and they follow, they follow visitors' natural reading habits by strategically placing information to tell a story. So try to align your white space with such common uh, reading patterns to guide users' attention even easier. And last but not least, mobile design and touch interfaces. Never forget to optimize your white space for mobile screens. Mobile devices have smaller screen, screens sorry, <laughs> compared to desktops, which makes a white space crucial not only for readability, but for accessibility as well. So adjust your line height, font sizes, and padding to ensure optimal uh, readability, and try to maintain a balanced uh, ratio between your content and the white space and also increase the white space around interactive elements, such as uh, navigation menus, links, and buttons, to make sure they're uh, easily accessible and also easy to tap uh, with uh, the finger. And that's pretty much it, <laughs> since this is a lightning talk. We will wrap up this presentation with a quote from uh, Jan Chiholt, who was a German a typographer, and he was the first one to acknowledge and uh, highlight the importance of uh, white space in design. Uh, I hope it was helpful for you. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was indeed a very packed talk. So thank you. Sure. Thank you from us. Thank you. And let's take a picture for this. Oh, of course. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, everyone, and make sure to stay here. Oh, there's another gift coming. Oh, very cool. <laughs> Give a warm applause for Ivana, and see you, you in five minutes for our next speaker.